This week, we are talking about value. Value in art is when we refer to the lightness or darkness of something. We can talk about value in terms of white to black, or we can talk about value in terms of color. Color can also have value. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to look at a value scale. So I have this paint sample that I got from this store. I just found a gray and I taped it together. And then I punched a hole in each of the spots so that I could test the value of things. Seven is my magic number for my value scale. So white is number one, two, three, four, five, six, down to the black is my seventh value. That's just how I like to do it. That just works for me. Some people like to do um, a white and a black and two values. Some people like to do a light a medium and a dark so they only have three values I do that when I'm doing a value pattern and some people like to go up to 10 or 12 uh, I find seven is my magic number so that's just kind of how I do it so if we were going to create a value scale we would leave the first the one end white and then we would want to color in one end of the darkest that our pencil will color I'm not spending a whole lot of time on this because I've done this many times, but um, you're welcome to spend however much time you want to on that. Obviously the easiest is just leaving the paper white and then I get my darkest value and then I just went across adding a layer each time to make it darker and darker. That's a very, <laughs> a very simple value scale. Now there are a couple different ways to create values. One is drawing with value. So um, we, I'm going to show you how to do this with pencil and pen in each of these categories. So the first category is stippling, which means you're just putting dots. And so the further apart the dots are, the lighter, the more the white paper is going to show through. And so the lighter the value. As you get to the bottom, the more dots that you put on the bottom, the more, the darker the value. As you can see, my Sharpie is going to naturally have darker value just because the a single dot of the Sharpie is black and the graphite is still um, gray. So depending on what medium you're using, it's going to affect your value or your ability to get darker or lighter values. So I don't use stippling very often because it just takes a long time and I am not that patient. I cannot imagine being Syrah and doing an entire picture full of dots. <laughs> that is just a lot of patience. The next one is going to be hatching. This I use a lot more often. And it just means that you're doing lines in one direction. It doesn't matter which direction you actually do, but the same thing, the further apart the lines and the lighter you draw, the lighter the value, the closer and more overlapping the lines and the more pressure you put, the darker the value. So there's hatching with a pencil. So you can see where I've overlapped because they're just lines of darker hatching. And then um, we have cross hatching, which is exactly how it sounds. 
it's when you go in one direction and then you add another layer in the opposite direction. So this is going to give you even darker value than just hatching. I love this method of drawing because I feel like it gives you some really great texture. So it adds interest to your drawings. Okay, one more thing that I wanted to add that isn't on the page is scribbling. I think scribbling looks pretty cool too when you're using it. To add value or shading. And I am just doing it closer together and darker. It's the same thing, more pressure. That applies with the pencil. It applies less with pens. Pens, you just have to do it farther away. Isn't that a fun way to shade something though? Okay. The next way that we're going to use value is with our paint. So I have a white paint, I have a gray paint, I have a black paint, and then I have a couple of colors here. So when we add white to a color, it will make it lighter and we call that a tint. When we add gray to a color, it makes it less intense and we call that a tone and when we add black to a color then it makes it darker and we call that a shade. So I'm going to make a tint and a tone and a shade with a color. Okay so I use this aquamarine turquoise color to make a tint, a tone, and a shade. A word of caution with the black is you do not need a lot of black. It goes a long way. You always need a lot more white. But black, you just need a little dab. So um, maybe something that would have been fun is to turn it the other way so that the white was on this end and then as it gradually went it um, changed from tint tone to shade but anyway I think this is a good example of what adding white and gray and black can do. On our index card and to continue our warm-up we are going to pick a color and we are going to make a nice gradation from white to black but with a color um, just to practice blending colors so pick your color that you want to use and I'm gonna actually put my color a dab of my color in the middle I'm gonna put a dab of my white on this end and a dab of black less black on this end and in between this process don't um, hesitate to rinse your brush it's totally okay if you need to rinse your brush or even add water to make the colors blend easier I think is really amazing and fun 
to do now is I'm going to just paint a gray stripe right down the middle. And this is because even though I'm going to use the exact same paint, it's amazing to see that because the gray is next to lighter or darker shades of this pink color, it's going to change the look of my gray line. So see if you notice that. If you have your gray paint and you can paint a strip down, see if you notice the, the change. So my gray is a little translucent. But from one end to the other end, it definitely looks like this is a lighter gray and this is a darker gray just because of what is surrounding it. And you almost lose the gray in the middle. I could come back and do a couple of coats of that gray if I want to make it less translucent, but I'm not sure that I really mind and where it's just a, um, where it's just a warm up card, it's not super important. Um, another thing I might try, <laughs> just for fun since it's sitting right there, is I have some gray oil pastels, so I might make some lines with those just for fun. Let's see if I get any different. All right, some functions of value. Value is great for adding variety um, to create form, which we will talk about next week. Value also creates depth. So things that are further away get lighter. Things that are up close are generally darker. Value also contributes to contrast. We're, we'll talk more about that when we talk about trying to create a focal point. But if you use your lightest values and your darkest values together next to each other, it creates a great contrast, which makes your eyes want to go to that spot. So there are many functions of value. Those are just a few of them. And let's go ahead and get started on our project. Okay, for this project, we are going to use a, an index card. We are going to use either a black and white image in a magazine or something else that's going to work great for this is a picture of maybe fruit or flowers, but um, hopefully they're blown up. You don't want to find really small pictures in a magazine um, for this particular project. You're going to need a ruler, a pencil, scissors, and then you're going to need your black, gray, and white paint. And a paintbrush, um, water to rinse your brush, and a towel. Okay. So for starters, we are going to make ourselves a, what's called a viewfinder. And since we are working on a rectangular format, we are going to make our viewfinder rectangular also. So we could get really technical and measure out how big our rectangle is going to end up being. You can also take the card and put it in the corner of the paper. And then if we draw a diagonal line. I'm going to have to grab a longer ruler for this. I don't know why this works mathematically, but it does. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put my ruler in this corner and this corner of the paper while I have my paper stuck in that corner. And I'm just going to draw a diagonal line. This is a little technical. So if this is too complicated and it just overwhelms you, then don't worry about it. You don't have to do this. But um, now I'm going to wherever that diagonal line inter 
intersects I'm drawing a line across it and I'm going to take my ruler it doesn't really matter what the length of my ruler is now I'm just going to draw and create a border that is not right <laughs> Um, okay, so what, what I should have done is um, the this side and this side are the same and that will work perfectly, but then I need to come in where that diagonal line is actually at and that's where I should cut my paper off. That will make a similar rectangle. So I'm going to cut out this box with my scissors here and then I'm going to use this as a viewfinder I probably should have done it on the line side so I didn't have all these crazy lines but that's all right um I'm going to cut that out and then I'm going to use it as a viewfinder to find what I want to draw on my paper and then we're going to paint the darkest parts of the picture with black and the white lightest we're going to paint with white and then the middle ground colors we're going to do with gray so we're just going to do kind of a blown up version of a very simple value pattern picture okay i have my viewfinder now and i'm going to take these so a gray and white I mean, a black and white um, photo is really easy because it already takes the color out for you. I, ooh, I just really like the lines here. So back to when we were talking about structure, I love the horizontal lines and then this kind of organic curved line and some more curves so I kind of I'm I'm liking that the now the the trouble or the 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 challenge is to see if I can either squint my eyes and see the values see the light values and the dark values and the gray values or if that's really hard for you to do you can make a gray and white photo of that I am going to draw this in with pencil just so that I have it marked because I do like that but I don't know if I I might want to keep on searching around here that has a really great dark value to it and some fun curves that's a an interesting spot there too. And I don't have to stick with one direction or another. I can switch my card around. focus on the leaves I do like that I do like the leaves okay uh <laughs> I do I kind of like the first one uh, the best anyway. So I'm going to use a little bit of tape and stick that to the page. I, um, I'm i gonna put the tape on my lay my pants first to get it a little less sticky because I don't I want to be able to keep reusing this viewfinder. It's just very convenient and I'm gonna put that up and start to draw this out 
and then I'm going to start um, painting in the, the values. We'll see how this turns out. Okay, so now that I am finished with this um, little value sketch that we did here, um, there are just a few things that I wanted to point out. One is, um, this one thing that is definitely hard with using the lower quality paint is the coverage and the inconsistencies. So where the white and the black covered a little better, the gray was really translucent. And so you can see more of the brush strokes and um, it also had a tendency to pick up whatever color I had last used because I have a tendency not to wash my brush in between and so that kind of uh, it was a little bit of a challenge. Also in the picture this line here I totally made up because I didn't want to lose the curve so sometimes you have to use your artistic license and decide whether or not you want to add things or not that weren't there. Um, if I would have left it black, that it would have just um, cut off some of that, some of the apples or peaches. I'm not sure if these are peaches or apples, but uh, they look like peaches. So it might have just kind of cut off some of the peaches, um, the edge of the peach, which would probably work. I don't know if I like that line that I added or not, but. Another thing is that we're using three values and of course this picture has more than three values. So you just have to make the tough decision. You have to limit yourself and that's not a bad thing um, to limit yourself on values and just give the area a light, a medium, or a dark value. So that is part of the lesson that we learned here. I think it's just kind of a fun picture. It turned out fun. Um, maybe, I don't know that I would necessarily want to hang it on my wall, but I could come back in and add some texture with pen or pencil to create the hatching and the stippling and the cross hatching and the scribbling that we talked about. That might add some interest. It's the point is to pick out the light, medium, and dark values in a small area and a simple picture and so that's what we did. That's what we accomplished. So now I'm going to rip off the tape and I'm going to call it a day.